Welcome to a new recording on Python for machine learning. In this recording we are going to discuss how to implement Linet version 5 as presented in his paper of gradient based learning applied to document recognition by Jan Lecal et al. In this paper as we scroll down We can find over here a proposed architecture for convolutional networks that is used for object recognition or object classification. It starts with the input. Here it is according to MNIST 32 by 32 image, 32 in width and 32 pixels in height. Following a convolutional layer that applies a filter of 5 by 5 to each pixel uh, or each window in the original image and here we can see that it casts from three channels for RGB, red, green and blue to six channels. So as a mathematical calculation we find out that 32 by 32 becomes 28 by 28. Afterwards we apply a max pooling subsampling layer that takes the maximum value of each window so that we can have a better learning by eliminating the minimum or medium range values. Then it applies another set of fi uh, filters uh, using convolution but this time with 16 channels and the result becomes 10 by 10 max pooling one more time and here we are done with the feature extraction Afterwards, the extracted features are fed into a dense neural network that has the architecture of 120 new hidden neurons, 84 hidden neurons in the second hidden layer, and finally 10 output neurons. And here 10 output neurons because we are working on the MNIST uh, dataset which has only 10 digits. If you're interested in reading more, you can always refer to the paper published on yanlecan.com. So let's get our hands on the code. Here we are using uh, PyTorch version 0.3. We start with importing the useful libraries we are going to need in our code. It starts with torch.autograd import variable then import torch.nn as nn, that's a neural network, torch.nn.functional as f. And f here uh, is an alias for functional, so that you can have a short code to refer to usually as you're writing. We start by defining our class, learnit5, that extends from the parent bytorch module for neural networks, nn.module. This way we don't have to implement most of the la functionality on our own. In order to extend nn.module, we have to define our architecture inside the init function, that's the constructor in Python, and then we have to define the forward method. That's when the data is being operated on when the network has been fed with features or with an input image. We start here by calling the parent f by calling the parent uh, class in a module constructor. Then we define the first convolutional layer that takes three input channels, output six input channels with a window of uh, size five by five. Then we need to apply the max pooling or su uh, subsampling by applying a two by two window which takes the maximum value of each. 2x2 two two window in our convoluted image. Then another layer for convolution that's 6x16, six 6 six input channels, that's the value we have got after we have applied the first convolutional layer and then the output becomes 16 channels as reference in the original paper using 5x5 five five kernels. Here we have to say that we are missing a one more convolutional layer, a uh, subsampling layer. Let's add that over here. Let's make sure that we are getting the right convolutional size. So this one is subsampling 
<coughs> with 16 channels and the kernel is 5x5 five five. No, not the kernel sorry this is the size of the image let's get back to our code and carry on having done convolution max pooling twice then we feed our outputs to the linear function or the dense unit this is actually we can call this part of the network the feature extraction part and then this section of our network becomes the classifier section it is worth saying that in the original paper different classifiers such as kn n and so on has been used and experimented with let's also note that these numbers here these dimensions they are the output of the classification fil uh, filters and usually we have to inspect them manually in order to hard code these values next we have the exact architecture 120 hidden neurons 84 hidden neurons then 20 uh, output classes because we are training on a, a custom data set that I have collected manually for Lego images that have 20 classes now let's head on to our forward method forward method simply calls the uh, neural net architecture we have applied here on every uh, input image that is being given and let's say that the input image has the dimensionality of 128 that's the number of patches and then it should have here two more uh, three more uh, uh, dimensions we have set it to be 20 by 20 uh, 2024 by 2024 uh, widths and height image with three channels we feed the value x to the first convolutional layer then we apply rectified linear unit from f to relu and then we apply the max pooling on the output of the rectified linear unit do that twice for the second convolutional layer and let's over here inspect the size of the X tensor as we have done some changes to this pooling function now let's head over to a code over here I have written to inspect or train and test the network I will discuss the implementation of this code later in this section let's run it first make sure that everything we have done is correct so far take a few seconds or few minutes for training it depends on your hardware if you're having a GPU that would be perfect because PyTorch supports calling .cuda on any model and that usually helps with the speeding up the training So it is issuing some warnings now it's started working with uh, printing out the loss and we were having the dimension we have printed in our code let's stop it here let's get back to our network let's now have a look at these dimensions we can see that they haven't changed so we don't have to do any more changes to our network now we are calling PyTorch function for changing or reshaping the tensor dimensions and when I say tensor it means simply the implementation of matrix vector or 3D or 3 dimensional matrix in PyTorch x.view uh, x .view is simply reshaping the dimensions of the input minus 1 means keep the first dimension for the patches as is and then we are concatenating all the features to 16.16.16 uh, 16 16 to only one 1d vector of 16 by 61 by 61 next we pass X the output of the extra feature extraction section 
into the first final layer or dense layer FC1 apply rectified linear unit on the output one more time with uh, the, uh, the next hidden layer apply rectified linear unit finally the final layer and then we apply the log softmax softmax here it takes the values of the output layer the final layer and changes that to a probability distribution that's if you sum all the outputs the output will equal one it's usually easier to have this probability distribution so that you can pass it over to the loss function we'll talk about that next let's remove this print now let's head over to our training method here we are used a training generic model function we have uh, implemented that simply takes the model name we are going to implement since you can see over here we are trying to train and test different models for computer vision next it takes the learning rate here we have set a quite high learning rate to speed up the process usually you wouldn't set such a high learning rate in production since uh, you want uh, the loss function not to spring or jump too much when it is trying to find the global minima of the weights versus the loss function next here we are training a batch size of 5 just so that we can see if, uh, results quite quickly in production you would set that to 120k epochs that's uh, quite uh, meaningful when it comes to training on real world data let's set it back here to 5 for quick testing and then the batch size which doesn't affect the training process very much is 128 let's head over to the definition of this method here we are shadowing uh, some global variables defined earlier in the file the batch size, the learning rate, and the epochs, and we are converting them to the casting them over to the types we are using integer for batch size and epochs, and float for learning rate. From PyTorch Vision library, we imported transforms, and transforms here we are composing a set of transforms to be applied on the data set. First, we scale the, tr uh, the input image to 265 by 250, uh, 256 by 256 and then converting this pillow image to tensor by torch tensor because usually by torch vision library imports the dataset as pillow images now it becomes a tensor afterwards we are applying a normalization of 0.5 for each channel rgb that's the mean and the standard deviation of 0.5 it's worth saying that or let's note that the values of each image now become in the range of a uh, 0 to 1 roughly next from torch vision data sets we pro uh, use the method image folder that reads all our uh, all the, our samples for training from the data set directory a global variable defined earlier and applies the transform we have defined over here to all the uh, samples in this data set here is our training folder each uh, folder has uh, the name or the title of the class label and inside are the samples for training as you can see over here next we pass this data set as a parameter to the train loader a torch.utilities data data loader that allows us to have an iterator to iterate over this data set with batch size as a passed as a parameter to the method with shuffle equal true so that we all don't get uh, the same data set for training at each time or each loop it shuffles the inputs so that we get more variation in our uh, training samples with number of workers 2 we actually could set that over to 8 since I have uh, 8 cores on machine I hope it doesn't break up since I have, was testing uh, many uh, architectures or many neural nets 
we can see here that it depends on the model on the model if model equals linet 5 which is the case then we initialize our network to be linet 5 imported from the other file next we define our loss function here we are defining negative log likelihood loss be careful with other loss functions as sometimes you don't have to apply the softmax at the final layer of your network since it is already applied inside the loss function <coughs> we have found the stochastic gradient descent optimizer quite useful for this kind of task I've experimented with Adam and some other optimizers with learning rate 0.01 passed as a parameter and momentum of 0.5 we could set that either uh, even to 0.9 let's see what happens it makes the training a uh, faster now we start the interesting part we start with defining a minimum loss of uh, 1 power 100 that's quite a large number our loss will never exceed that part but that's an a maximum equal to infinity loss because any other value for loss we are, go we are going to get through our training will be less than that you see how we'll use this value later and we're ap ap uh, appending or our uh, loss uh, data to a loss history list here how, how we define such a list for epoch in range number of epochs that's a for loop that iterates for a number of epochs passed as a parameter the loss for this epoch starts with value initialized to zero and a counter for how many iterations we made on this ebook will be, be incremented down here so that we can use it for dividing by uh, dividing the loss the sum of the loss by the number of the iterations to get an average value for the loss for each epoch this is quite tricky because sometimes you just print out the loss output from here but this is the loss for each batch and sometimes near the end of the loop you will get values less than the original batch size for example if you have 100 images or samples in your training set and your batch size of size uh, 8 then near the end when you are having uh, a nine, uh, 96 images the final ebook will have only 100 minus 96 that's a uh, for uh, samples and that's of course the loss in this case will not be uh, proportionate to the loss in another batch uh, in another loop where you had eight uh, samples so you have always to divide by uh, the number of uh, iterations you have made inside this epoch in order to get an average for the loss now we are enumerating our train loader into i that's the index for the loop and data that's a, a tuple in containing both inputs and labels so inputs are the features labels are the uh, ground truth classes for each uh, training set here we are doing something uh, quite tricky as uh, we are working with a custom data set so by default uh, the inputs tensor was of type torch dot double tensor and that wasn't compatible with the labels which was torch dot float tensor so here we had to cast it manually first we uh, apply variable to inputs tensor as the output of this uh, operation now we are having a, vec a vector or a matrix its dimensions are the batch size by the image dimensions in this case 256 by 256 by 3 and then wrapped inside the variable allowing bytorch to apply a differentiation on this matrix for learning later casting it as torch the float tensor probably here doing the same for labels which is uh, casted to long tensor again this is experimental as you go through the code you find that the uh, PyTorch loss function expects these um, labels to be a long tensor and this one to be a float tensor and you just uh, uh, fine-tune your uh, 
code accordingly. Starting here, we are saying uh, advising the optimizer defined earlier, which is the stochastic gradient descent to zero grad to initialize the parameters of these gradients. Next, we apply the we pass our inputs inside the network, which is Linet, and we get the outputs. Our inputs go through all the hidden layers we have discussed earlier, and we finally get our probability distribution of the outputs uh, after applying softmax. We pass the outputs and the ground truth labels to the criterion, the loss function, and we get the loss. Here we take the loss and call a method called backward, and through backward this is where the backpropagation algorithm is called, so that it can uh, reinitialize the weights or uh, modify the weights of the network with the finding it, uh, of how it is performing on the input data in regard for the output data so it fine it fine tunes the weights sees uh, which weights need to be adjusted which she need to be left alone of course this is all uh, according to the loss uh, to the learning rate we have defined earlier uh, let's see the back propagation uh, algorithm discussed in the paper here so that you have better understanding of what we are trying to say of course here it is discussing how we are doing the differentiation uh, a lot of uh, mathematics to go through you find it interesting to understand so the backward method simply applies this to every weight it says the new weight value equals the weight of the previous ebook minus the learning rate here it is uh, in our case it was 0.01 multiplied by the differentiation of the loss uh, of this weight by the differentiation uh, uh, in regard for the original weight you can always read this and you find it interesting and it helps you understand how your neural network is uh, performing how to change it later on you find it quite useful uh, I believe optimizer dot step uh, not quite sure uh, but it's uh, just after you are zero grade and apply the backward you, you just uh, move the cursor of your optimizer a step forward the loss is returned as a variable to get the tensor wrapped inside this variable you call dot data and dot data here it has a tensor of size one to get the actual value you index the first element of this vector or of this matrix that's the running loss we uh, increment our epoch loss by this running loss and keep our learning loss intact so that we can print it on the screen we increment the counter by one it goes on inside the for loop till all the data in this epoch uh, has been uh, performed or operated on and it goes on with another epoch another epoch the epoch loss becomes zero and the counter is initialized once more to zero finally we append the loss uh, to our loss history the epoch loss which is epoch loss equals epoch loss uh, divided by counter we log this value to a file open our loss function file Abends the model name to the file. Let's have a look over here from file from previous runs. Loss underscore lnet. That's the string we are passed as parameter to the function earlier. Write the file. Write all our loss history to the file joined by a new line. So that's a new line. Join string. Cast all every element in this list to a string for x in loss history. And then close the file. Here we are saying if this epoch has got a loss less than the minimum loss which was initialized to 1 power 100 then this is a good model. There are other methods to say that this is a good model. Usually you divide your data to training, validation, testing set. You see which uh, model has uh, got the best accuracy on the t validation or on the testing set and then save that model. 
here we said that loss is our metric to consider this is a good candidate to be our final model we create the directory if it doesn't exist using uh, python built-in method os.path.exist and then if it doesn't exist os.makeDeer models finally we use bytorch persistence methods for saving torch.save state dictionary that's the dictionary holding all the parameters has been trained in the network that's the weights of all the layers to a file of extension pp just a convention it could be any other extension you want to work with formatting here replaces the placeholder with the model name so that we don't have to write uh, hard code every model name to get something like this in our outputs then we uh, calculate the new minimum loss for next epochs using minimum of minimum loss and this epoch loss of course divided by counter to get an average value for the uh, loss when th all the epochs are done for epoch range number epochs we print finish training and return next we need a function to test uh, the performance of our uh, network we have implemented a function called test generic net of model start with the same transformers as we have done in the training call the training set or the data set on image folder usually this should be te called test set and the data set here, here should have different data from our training set so that we don't get overfitting applying the transforms wrapping it inside data loader for uh, uh, iterators let's increase this again to 8 reinitialize our network not here that follows are some lines of code to avoid it from uh, retraining the network we want it to load our saved model so we say net.train false we don't want to train this model load state dictionary that's the opposite of save state dictionary to load the parameters such as weights from torch.load this function that's so, uh, responsible for uh, coding or encoding decoding the PyTorch model saved in the file as a binary file with the format for replacing the placeholder of our model name then we run net.eval that's uh, after loading the parameters this just uh, sort of triggers the initializer for all these parameters on the network we enumerate our test loader inputs labels as a tuple return it from data bus them inside variables with float uh, tensor and long tensor over here next we uh, pass our inputs to the network get the outputs and starts to get different from our training method starting from here so outputs is a variable we call dot data so that we get the tensor wrapped inside the variable now we have a tensor of dim dimensionality batch size and the uh, number of uh, neurons in the final layer we take the max value since we said this is a probability distribution all equal or sum of uh, all these neurons in the final layer e equals one we take the maximum value of these neurons since the most likely cl right classification for this sample is the neuron holding the maximum value make sure to say that uh, you want this maximum to be taken across the horizontal dimensions if you do it other way around with zero that means it would take the maximum across the batches which is not right since you are taking the maximum value for each output neuron across all the vectors in your batch <coughs> 
which is not what you you want to do and we keep dimensionality equals true the maximum return is a list of uh, indices and values we take the first element which is the uh, values and indices and indices we take the first uh, element of this tuple which is the values uh, indices I, s I mean sorry these are our predictions for each sample in our patch next we examine this according to the ground truth quite tricky line of code but let's go through slowly prediction dot equal examines whether the our prediction output from our network equals the labels which is a variable dot data dot view as prediction means reshape the labels to match the dimensionality of the predictions so that you can apply the equality operator on both prediction and lab and labels or labels data afterwards you sum you sum the values that are equal to one in this uh, equality operation since pytorch will output a matrix or a vector of one where the prediction equals the right label and zero when prediction is not the correct prediction or not the ground truth label we sum the ones that's the number of the correct predictions we increment our correct predictions by this sum note that we have defined correct to equal zero at the initialization of our full loop after all the loop through our data set is finished we say that the training accuracy placeholder here for the model string string of model dot upper and then we have placeholder for percentage and actually python format method string format will automatically uh, get a percentage out of the parameter passed and here we are getting only two decimal points so here we are getting correct over lens of train loader dot data set and that's the overall uh, the number of total samples in our training set and how many of we of which was correctly classified this will be printed on the terminal and this one is the same string which we are going to save inside the file for a later reference we open the file we append mode and write our line of code uh, line of results and close the file and that's it inside main function we call train generic model and then test generic model let's recap quickly we started with defining our Leconet uh, version 5 convolution max pooling twice then dense layer classifier passed our inputs through all the layers got the right dimensionality for after the classification is done or feature extraction is done finally we uh, wrap uh, we write a method for training another method for testing and finally we run them f through the main function let's head over to the terminal to run our code one more once more and check out our results of course we don't expect a uh, very high values for accuracy as we are doing only five epochs usually you do 200k epochs even 500 million epochs 500,000 epochs and so on usually you find different models implemented uh, by default in PyTorch vision library so that you can download the models and use them as pre-trained models and apply transfer learning or you can uh, set the parameter pre-trained equals false so that you can retrain the model on your own data set Remember we have set our uh, training 
to work with eight workers that's eight CPU cores so it usually should be fast enough in the next recording we can uh, start discussing how to implement uh, CUDA for GPU processing using PyTorch which is a very simple one line of code just called dot CUDA method on your model you find more interesting benchmarks in the original paper that you can compare to your results after you're done with training.
as we can see it is almost there the loss is dropping from 3.1 to 2.3 2.5 of course we have saved the model with the minimum value for the loss it's not doing very great to so since the number of uh, epochs is very small that's five usually you need higher numbers now it is testing there is uh, the model that it has trained on the training set to see how much it is doing uh, in terms of the accuracy I will report the result very soon so it says here Linux training accuracy 26.22% on the training set since uh, also make sure that you are dividing your data to training and validation set since this will absolutely produce a model that doesn't generalize too well to other samples it hasn't seen before try to avoid overfitting thank you for watching this recording I promise you there will be more recordings if you enjoy this video let's share and subscribe to our channel thank you very much